Okay, I'm going to start screen sharing. If you look at Psalm 7, the Lord shall judge the people. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness, according to mine integrity that is in me. Wow. Can we dare pray that ourselves? Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness or goodness or holiness and according to mine integrity that is in me. Let me tell you something, I'm in show business. It's like many other businesses only, probably less, um, less well run. And integrity is a very rare thing to find probably anywhere, certainly among actors and producers and so forth. The integrity that is within me, do we dare ask God to judge us on our integrity and our holiness? That's what the psalmist is praying. And then when we look at some of the other things here, for instance, if you look at, um, well, that's Romans, but I wanted to go to Ecclesiastes. Again, I saw vanity under the sun, one person who has no other, either son or brother, yet there is no end to all his toil. And his eyes are never satisfied with riches so that he never asks, for whom am I toiling and depriving myself of pleasure? This also is vanity and an unhappy business. Well, if you toil after pleasure and riches, you are not seeking righteousness or integrity. And therefore, there is an emptiness. There is a vanity. The preacher is really right in much of what he sees. He's cynical to the point of no return, just about. But much of what he says is really quite true. And there are people like this all around us. So how do we handle this call to be holy. Paul says something interesting in Romans. And what you have to understand is he's talking about the Jewish law and he's talking about circumcision, which we will read about later in Genesis when it becomes a rite of initiation into uh, the Jewish people. And if you were circumcised, you could be, as Paul was before his conversion, proud of the fact that you were Jewish, proud of the fact that you were one of God's chosen people. But Paul makes an interesting point here in Romans. The one who is not circumcised physically and yet obeys the law, Gentiles, that is, non-Jews, will condemn you, Jews, who even though you have the written code and circumcision, in other words, the Ten Commandments, the law of Moses, even though you have this and are God's chosen people, you are a lawbreaker. A person is not a Jew who is one only outwardly, nor is circumcision merely outward and physical. No, a person is a Jew who is one inwardly. And circumcision is circumcision of the heart, by the spirit, not by the written code. Such a person's praise is not from other people, but from God. Circumcision of the heart. In other words, all of this that we go through, we people of faith, we should not take pride in because we are like the new chosen people. We Christians, Catholics in particular, have the fullness of revelation, but we dare not get proud of that because we should be praying, judge me, Lord, according to my righteousness and according to the integrity that is in me. And if we really know ourselves, we know we're not that righteous. And we're not really people of integrity, not fully. And so we stand in judgment when non-Christians around us follow the law that is written in their hearts. When non-Christians have more charity and love and compassion and try to do what is right, and we who have the fullness of the law and have, we don't have circumcision, we have baptism, which replaces it. And we sometimes become proud of that. Oh, well, I'm Catholic. There's my phone ringing. Hang on. Hey, Maria, let me call you back in like two minutes, okay? okay? All right, bye. Wasn't that embarrassing? Okay, where was I? So if we, if, we, if we then say, well, I'm okay. I'm Catholic. I've been baptized. I'm Catholic. I go to mass. I'm Catholic. I'm this and that. But the other people around us who might have integrity and righteousness stand in judgment of us. And if Paul says, you are not a Jew, Outwardly, you're a Jew inwardly, not because of circumcision in the flesh, but because of circumcision in the heart. Your heart needs to have 
the calluses around it torn away so that we have hearts of flesh and not hearts of stone. Then perhaps we can live as Christians, as the successors to the chosen people, the Jews, living the fullness of the children of Abraham. And then we will not be judged by those around us who might be living better lives, even though they might claim they're atheists. So this is a call and an admonition for all of us not to take pride in this and to perhaps work our lives so that we can at least be people of integrity, which is a big step toward righteousness so we can pray with the psalmist in Psalm 7. At any rate, this is what is going on and this is what it really means to begin to follow Christ or to begin to be good. And yet we don't really hear about this. We don't really hear about how this is an internal process, but it's in the Bible. And Paul especially is adamant about it. Well, I got to call Maria back. So I better do that now. <laughs>